they started the show, and I know, again, this is the classic definition of for the kind of people that like that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing those people are going to like. When the WWE is giving us mega stars that are in major motion pictures and sitcoms, and AEW starts a show with the entrance of Danny Garcia, you're f***ed already. And he goes to the ring and calls out MJF. He's, I'm not waiting. It sounds like Candido and Tammy, that same, I'm sweating. The same accent. Is he from New Jersey or what the f***s? I believe he's from Buffalo, New York. Well, and he spent some time in New Jersey. And then they do this constantly. So MJF is in the stands over in a spotlight with security, and he's drinking wine, and he's protected up there. And uh, just random observations, folks. It's so sad that MJF is having to try to get these not ready for primetime players over. But at the same point, this is not working for MJF either because it's the same kind of shit most weeks with people that we really don't give a fuck about except for the dwindling number of people that are in the arena watching it. And I don't know what they dwindled down to. And while I'm rambling, try to figure out what town they were in because I don't know if they had enough people in the building to do a wide shot when they were doing cover pitches where the announcers would throw to something, they were shooting the ceiling again. And this is not productive for the, again, they're <clears throat> the guy that's dwindling, the, uh, hanging by a thread of being their top star, MJF. And they're tearing each other down. And yes, he's verbally bullying Garcia like he does everybody. But Garcia is talking about MJF's acne being covered by makeup and his hair transplant in Turkey. And no, and then his, and then he talks about the worst thing, his fake love for AEW. Yeah, that's the worst thing. That's the worst thing. <laughs> other than this fucking devilish heel has ever done is he's, he doesn't really love the company that we all work for because we're all worker bees. But you can ruin the illusion with a shoot as well as you can sell tickets and create heat with a shoot. And you can have a personal issue with somebody without exposing to the fans things that they might not particularly think about or even know about, but that will ruin the illusion of the other intended party, which I've, I've found out early in mid South, you know, you couldn't, the one thing we couldn't say about Mr. Wrestling too, was that he was old. Cause guess what? He was fucking old but he was still a salty old bastard and he'd take it out on the boys in the ring, but it would diminish his aura because with the mask, he was kind of timeless. So we could, we could say he was a, a criminal that had to hide his identity or we could make fun of his fucking knee lift or his goofy fucking gyrations in the ring or his gruff demeanor, but we couldn't say, but also he's almost fucking 60 and he's bald as a cue ball. So anyway, MJF had to listen to this whole goddamn thing while Garcia told the long story about MJF is going to feel a tingle when he picks up his future baby. He had him married off and had a baby, and when you pick up your future baby, you're going to feel a tingle, and you're going to have to tell this fictitious baby that Danny Garcia ended your career. And I read it, it was like it's <clears throat> again, there's MJF up there with the security guard standing by in the spotlight, and there's Garcia in the ring. It's like theater in the round meets a college debate class. It just it just slowed everything goddamn down. MJF had the perfect reaction. That reaction was the best part of this whole thing. Well, yo, okay, give me my hand, Danny, learn to speak. MJF just standing up silently and clapping his hands yeah. was one of the funniest things I've seen in a while. But but then he has to goddamn do his shit, so he 
And he let the fans, he paused to look at the fans who were getting on him one time long enough. They started chanting, shut the fuck up. And they don't even try to bleep it on this porn channel that they're on. He said, what a goddamn bunch of degenerates. <laughs> well, they allowed the word fuck on this program on national cable for six times. They're a bunch of filthy mouthed people. Of the par Where's the Parents Resource Council? Where's Tipper Gore? Is, is, is she still able to be tipped over and sit out? I don't think Tipper's been uh, on the front lines of that battle in many, many years. I bet you Al hadn't been on the front lines of Tipper in many years. She was scared of Frank Zappa. Imagine what she'll think of Tony Khan. Oh, my. Well, it, it, she'll think, <laughs> actually, didn't Frank Zappa have a son that looks somewhat like Tony Khan? Dweezil? Dweezil was his name, and Dweezil was his name, Mo. All right, so MJF is going to do his thing here, and finally he tells Danny that when he breaks his neck, and that, again, it's almost like a Moxley thing. We're now MJF, everybody knows, especially this audience, knows that you're not really going to paralyze this guy for life. You're not going to break his neck and drink his blood. But then when he breaks Danny Garcia's neck, his mother will take care of Danny like she's taken care of all the other men on their backs in her bed in her day. <laughs> and just... And just sure. By the way, your mother's a whore! <laughs> <laughs> and she is gratified with so many of them. And so Danny bails out and starts running up there. And here these the security comes and Garcia's throwing those awful tater punches that I talked about last week where he can't hit, throw a punch and hit anybody's proper target with his fist, but he'll hit him in the face with some elbow, forearm, miss of whatever. And then he fights his way up to the box. And MJF, as soon as he charges MJF, MJF breaks the wine bottle over his head. Boom! And down he goes. And that's, okay, that looked pretty good, right? Shit, we've done something here. Maybe MJF could have even looked like shocked, like it was a reflex. Like Junkyard Dog didn't mean the hair cream. Or not Junk, but Freebirds free bird didn't cream. mean the hair cream. Yeah. Didn't mean the hair cream in Junkyard Dog's eyes. It was an accident. But instead, <laughs> he takes a sip of wine. He straightens his jacket brushes himself off he goes and sits danny up and danny's got a little pap smear of juice to him oh, it was a good little amount was it i wouldn't call that a pap smear would you and well it finally it dripped down right below his eyes for fuck's sake if you're gonna get hit over the head with a bottle like these to the bone for the business kid but anyway he's got a this is the worst it is the fakest part that Garcia's got to act like he's knocked out and MJF cradles his head and squats down next to him. So do you mind if I sit next to you? And cuts a dramatic whispering promo to him about all the horrible things he's going to do to him. And nobody's trying to stop it. All the security has disappeared. And again, like I said about on the WWE where Priest disappeared, and Uso disappeared after they had done offensive shit, right? One of the security guards, right before the bottle shot, all fucking Garcia did was shove him out of the way. What did he do? Fall in a goddamn crevice and be trapped like the little Timmy's down the well? Lassie, lassie, get help. Little Timmy's in the well. And everybody, the crowd is silent listening to this because and the spotlight is on it it looked like a goddamn stage play and mjf doesn't need to do fake shit do you see what my problem was with this thing that went so long yeah i wasn't crazy about the ending too and mjf uh, kissing him and then just playing with the blood on his mouth or whatever the fuck was happening there but <sighs> I think there are elements of what MJF did that I like, but I've said it before, MJF being used to elevate these guys that are, should not be elevated right now is ridiculous, and it keeps happening. It's been 
feels like a couple of years of this. I mean, even the stuff with the four pillars, which didn't really work right, didn't really take off or click correctly because he was the only one who could do a promo. It's just he keeps being used to elevate guys. He's better, like you said, interacting with other main event people, but there aren't any main event people. That's the problem. <laughs> Jerry, other- there are no people. Osprey's a main event person. He's already dealing with other people and working on other things. Moxley's yeah, got his own. How the, how the fuck didn't we get a rematch on that shit, a la Drew and Punk? Because for fuck's sake, at least it was interesting. Well, you asked before, uh, Jim, about the attendance. Oh, well, and, and hold on a second. I'll, I'll, let me bring one more thing up, and then we can talk about the attendance, because this is still this segment. As soon as MJF is done with this dramatic rendition, did you hear Sockface's pitch from the broadcast desk? Oh, I don't remember that specific one, but he had a really rough night. There were points where he couldn't figure out what words to say, and he got flustered. Oh, well, that's that's normal. And then Shivani would jump in with nothing. Just, oh, that's a great call. I'm digging this. This is great. Nothing. He says nothing. Bubblehead. Ah, bubblehead? You bubble-headed booby? But what did he say? Well, the point, well, the, the point is, the, the pitch. Now, examine what has happened from a broader standpoint. Daniel Garcia, one of the wrestlers, has called out one of the other wrestlers, MJF. MJF's in the stands. They've had words back and forth. It's led to a fight where at least five to seven security guards have apparently been paralyzed or rendered in some type of coma. And then a bottle got broken over Daniel Garcia's head. And MJF was drinking his blood, and nobody was able to stop it. And then Sockface says, well, we're going to get medical attention for Daniel Garcia, but right now to backstage and our colleague, Renee Moxley Good, who was smiling. (laughs) Thanks, guys. With four baby faces who were all smiling. Willow was there smiling, and Briscoe was there smiling. And Kyle O'Reilly was there making funny, goofy faces, because why not? His career is over anyway, poor fella. And Osprey came in smiling. Even if they pre-taped it at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they had to know where they were putting it in the show. They acted like, well, yeah, fucking Garcia may have brain damage, and he's bleeding like a stuck hog, but we got to get this fucking interview in, otherwise we're in a good fucking mood. Not even just any interview, but... You know, Garcia may be dead, but Renee Moxley Good is talking to the comedy troupe. Let's go to them. Yes. Can I die? It's always poorly formatted. They never do the right thing. Never, ever, ever. And these segments are awful. Uh, the, the promo, backstage promo segments specifically. 